Good morning. Welcome to Grace United Methodist Church. I am Senior Pastor Jim Miller, along with Deacon Helen Ballou. We have the opportunity to lead you in worship today. I give thanks for your presence, all who are gathered with us online. Thank you for being here and for all who gather in person on this uh, summer day that's suddenly upon us here. I've been hearing different weather reports coming in here, How what a difference a day makes. And so I hope you can just have a wonderful day of blessing ahead of you. So as we gather this day, I invite you to please take a moment and sign the registration pad and pass that along to the person beside you. And Vicki is guiding you online there and signing in on chat. We are just so grateful to have our online presence. Well, as I was speaking of summer, that means that our ministries, they continue and a very special ministry this summer is our brown bag ministry. And Bob Miller is with us this morning to share about the upcoming opportunity, ways that you can serve. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Grace Church and brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I have the pleasure to come before you today uh, to let you know that the Grace Brown Bag Program is again returning to Grace this summer, June, July, and August. For those of you who aren't familiar with our Brown Bag Program, it began at Grace many, many years ago with the purpose of filling the gap uh, of serving meals to the needy and hungry people of Gaithers, the Gaithersburg community uh, when the Lord's Table Soup Kitchen closed for the summer months. During 2021 and 2022, the Lord's Table Hot Meal Program and the Brown Bag Program moved to Epworth United Methodist uh, Church, and, and we all endured, of course, the pandemic. Last summer, at the conclusion uh, of the pandemic, and as Grace fully reopened, uh, we resumed our traditional role hosting the Summer Brown Bag Program, and it was very successful uh, with your, uh, your help and, and donations. We will continue hosting Brown Bag at Grace Church this summer as well, June, July, and August, 12.30 to 2.30, Monday through Friday. Just a, a footnote on the Lord's Table. Uh, we will continue our partnership with them, uh, alternating weeks, but it's all housed here at Grace Church, alternating weeks with their volunteers continuing to serve uh, in, on opposite weeks. So Grace will have the first week in June, and then we will have uh, volunteers from all around the community uh, from the Lord's Table doing the second week, and we'll continue that alternating week format. It, it allows them to keep their volunteers active, and as well, they continue to provide some of the product that we use to make the, the brown bags. Um, I, I have more, a, a footnote uh, on the Lord's Table, uh, that they are reporting um, and project record numbers. It concludes the hot meal program uh, here in April. The hot meals will have been served this season. Over 6,500 hot meals are projected to have been served uh, by the, the Lord's Table. We have a wonderful team here from Grace that I believe did every second Thursday under the leadership of Susan Tanna and many of you that are, are servants here at, at Grace. Um, the other side, uh, of the, or the flip side, of this accomplishment is uh, the sobering reality uh, that the needs of the hungry in our community continue to grow and significantly. Last summer, our program served approximately 25 clients per day after a very slow start in June, uh, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, 12.30 to 2.30, as I said. But we served about 1,500 lunches uh, during those three months of operation. We expect those numbers to increase, as the Lord's Table experienced this summer, to approximately 2,000 brown bags served. So we will need lots of help. Servers help with the program by serving as kitchen workers, making robust, and I mean robust, sandwiches, two per bag, uh, and prepping the brown bags with fresh fruit, chips, and cookies. Another way to serve is through your monetary support. As you would realize, fresh fruit and other prices for product continue to challenge our resources 
despite all your generosity. Our goal is to provide the most nutritious meals we can. Please consider it may be the only meal our needy in our community have that day. Can you make a ham and cheese sandwich? If so, please join me to help in whatever way you can. Through this program, people receive not only lunch, but the hospitality of Grace Church. If you're not here today and, and, or don't have your calendar with you, please give me a call, 301-502-3618. I'm sure I can accommodate your uh, service. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, for your leadership and for the opportunity to be in the community. And to those who are new to Grace, first and foremost, welcome. So glad that you're here and to find out about this ministry and others that we are about, both uh, locally and globally, please visit our website at graceumc.org. As our general conference continues to unfold, we have another week coming up. Thank you for your prayers. Again, you can visit our website. It has all the links that will take you to what's happening in the life of the church and just continue your prayers as we navigate and look forward to the ways that God will use us. Now, as we gather to worship, at this time, Deacon Helen will lead us in our call to worship. Easter people, we have been saved by the risen Christ the life-giving vine. We abide in love, the life-giving vine. We are branches of the vine, sustained, nurtured, and pruned by love. We have no life apart from love, the life-giving vine. When we make our home in the vine, and the vine makes a home in us, we bear the fruit of love. Easter people, how shall we bear the fruit of love, the life-giving vine? We will love and learn to love as we rest, play, work, and build community with God. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to stand and sing hymn number 384, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
Please be seated. Thank you. Lost in love, wonder, and praise. What a glorious moment it is to know that we are in God's presence. So as we gather this day, let us take this time to be cleansed as we offer together our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Merciful one, you know when we are afraid to love. You know when we are too cowardly to show mercy. Remind us again that perfect love casts out such fears. Surround us and strengthen us with your perfect love, even in the face of our imperfections. Impue us with a love so strong, with such growth toward perfection, that we may cast aside our pride and embrace the power of love. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Christ is the vine. We are simply branches. If we abide in Christ, Christ's words will abide in us. Ask for whatever you wish in Christ's name, and it will be granted. In the name of Christ, you who seek forgiveness are forgiven. In the name of Christ, you who seek forgiveness are forgiven. Let us take this time to share signs of peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you. We give thanks for all God's children. I'd like to invite our younger children to join me up front for this morning's children's message. And some are already here, so that's good. Come on, join us now, please. Sure. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, Blair. Welcome, Brooks. Good to see you here. Please have a comfortable seat here. Sure. Very good. Thank you. 
and Olivia's already here. Welcome. Thank you for letting me have this seat because you get up easier than I do, I assure you. So glad you're here. And Lauren, thank you for your help. How's everybody doing this morning? Doing well? All right. Now, do you recognize what I brought here today? Grapes. Grapes that's right. Don't they look good? They're very fresh. Right? Very nice. Now, did these grapes grow right here in this bowl? That wouldn't have worked, would it? No. Where did they grow? They grew on a, that's right, they grew on a vine, eventually were harvested, brought to the market where, where I purchased them there. That's right. So the reason they could grow is because they were connected to that vine. Now, don't they look good right now, don't they? I'm going to share these, I promise you. Now, what's going to happen to these grapes since they've been disconnected from the vine? And if they were to sit here for a week before I shared them, would they be very tasty? No. no. They, they'd look like raisins, wouldn't they? Yeah, they'd be all dried up. And then, no, they would not be because they're, if they're no longer connected to the vine, they lose their fruitiness, don't they? They would not have the quality that they have now. Well, Jesus talked about that in our lesson today. He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Now, was he talking about growing grapes and caring for a vineyard? No. He was talking about our relationship with him. How we stay connected with Jesus. If we think he's the vine, how do we draw nutrient? How do we draw strength from him? Well, doing just what you're doing. Coming to church. Going to Sunday school. Taking time to pray read the Bible or have the Bible read to you, those are all ways that we stay connected to the faith. So this week, I want to challenge you. Think about ways that you can stay connected. Even if you volunteer to say the prayer at meal at your house or before you go to bed at night or to have a verse of the Bible read to you, that's the way we retain our strength. Now, I have a lot of grapes here. What should I do with them? Should I keep them for myself? No, that wouldn't be good, would it? I could share that. And that's what we're called to do. Jesus says, abide in me and I abide in you. That is, stay with me and you will bear much fruit. That is, you will have a lot to share with the world. So this week, as we think about how we stay connected with Jesus, let's also think about how can we share the love of Jesus with those around us. So now as you go to Sunday school, Olivia, here you go. I have some grapes for you. And may this give you some energy for this beautiful day, but also may it remind you of the importance of staying connected with Jesus throughout your life. Thank you for being here. And again, we have our nursery care and we have our Sunday school. And little ones are welcome to stay as well as we gather. At this time, Chris is going to share with us our gospel lesson. I invite you to stand as you are able. Good morning. The lesson today is from John 15, um, 1 through 8. Jesus, the true vine. I am the true vine, and my Father is the wine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself 
unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch that withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The word of the Lord for the people of all. Please remain standing for our hymn of response. Please be seated. I invite you to pray with me. Lord, this is our prayer, that we can be like you in our hearts, to be Christian, to be loving, to be holy, to be like you. On our own, Lord, we miss each of those marks, but in you it all becomes possible. As your Holy Spirit has worked to bring us to this point in our faith journey, so we can avail ourselves this day and allow this to be the prayer flowing from our hearts. 
Lord, you have given us the example of what it means to live a life that glorifies God. But also you have given us the power to do so through your presence. Through your gift of the Holy Spirit, we ask, O oh God, that you will continue to empower us, that each day this will become our goal, to be more loving, to be more Christian, to be more holy, to be more Christ-like in all that we do. Bless and be glorified in this time, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning we gather on what is the fifth Sunday of Easter as we continue through this journey of the great 50 days from Easter to Pentecost. So during this season we light the Paschal candle. We have the Easter surroundings that remind us this is a time of celebration. Just as 40 days led up during Lent to Easter, so Jesus spent 40 days on earth after Easter and then told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until they were clothed with power from on high. And ten days later, the day of Pentecost occurs. So during this season, we look at Jesus' words anew. Today, as we read in John 15 and next week in the final Sunday, the 17th of this season, we hear Jesus telling in his farewell discourse, instructing his disciples that he will soon rise and depart what that means to be a follower of his. And when we look at these words that he offered, we discover what it means to be a follower of Christ today. So here we begin in this passage from John, the 15th chapter, where Jesus says, I am the vine. My father is the vine grower. Right there he describes this powerful connection that exists within the Trinity, this relationship, this demonstration of perfect love. And so we are invited to know this kind of connection. I give thanks as we mentioned and we'll pray this morning that our general conference has gathered and the work continues and continue to be in prayer as they are in their legislative work and that all comes to fruition this week. But already we are receiving reports of what it means, of what there is a new spirit amongst us. It's the testimony that we're hearing as we adjust our social principles to recognize and reflect what it truly means to extend basic human rights to all, that all are included in God's love. Here we see a church that has come through a season of disaffiliation and through the season of COVID, as, as Bob mentioned, and find ourselves being renewed. God seeking to use us. God using us in powerful ways. Father Richard Rohr put it this way, he wrote, most of us were taught that God would love us if and when we change. In fact, God loves you so that you can change. That is what empowers change, what makes you desirous of change, is the inner experience of love. This alone becomes the engine of positive change. God is about this kind of work in our world today. Where there's division, where there's protest, where there are voices of dissent. We hear and are renewed this day in the one who meets us right where we're at. The one, yes, who tells us, I am the vine. My father is the vine grower. I am the true vine. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. You see, if we look back in these words of farewell that started in John, the 13th chapter, we will hear these words, not as words of judgment, but a statement of truth. Do you recall what happened in the 13th chapter of John? Where Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Peter's objected. 
Say, no, Lord, you, you can't do that. I should be washing your feet. And Jesus said, no, unless I wash you, you can have no part of me. The washing has taken place. Christ has done for us what we could not do on our own. And that is to reconnect us to the vine grower. Through the vine, through Jesus the Christ, we are washed. And now the work of pruning begins. In the Greek, the word pruning means cleansing. To know that God is cleansing us in a way that we can each be used more fully and live a life that is more fully devoted to Christ and bearing fruit and making a difference in this world. Theologian David Loos put it this way. He says, the vines that bear good fruit will be pruned so they can grow more. Pruning is part of gardening. That's just how it works. Sometimes you cut a bush or a vine back until it looks nearly like a barren stalk, precisely so that new growth is possible. It feels aggressive, but I think perhaps it is ultimately a promise that God can and will take even what is most challenging in our lives and use it to prepare us for service. God can take what is most challenging in our lives and use it for God's service. What challenge are you going through? What challenges do we see us going through as a denomination? Whatever is the most challenging aspect of your life and our life together, God is going to use it in order for us to serve. You abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, wait a minute. We hear that statement, we think, and we know folks who we live and work with who have nothing to do with Christianity, have nothing to do with Christ. They do a lot of good in the world, and that's very true. But who is the source of this goodness? Who is the one who seeks to bring good into a world so conflicted at war and struggling? The very source, the vine grower we look to this day, our source of true life. This is what gives us hope. This isn't God condemning us, but God seeking to use us, God seeking to revive us as the church to make a difference in this world, to live out Christ's teachings, the goodness that flows from him. We didn't create this on our own. This doesn't make us better than anybody else. Christ is the vine. We are the branches. And let's not get that reversed. Christ is our true source of life. A couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity to attend along with our stewardship leader, Bob Tyson, the Financial Leaders Academy. This is put on by the Mid-Atlantic Foundation. They are a branch of our Baltimore, Washington conference. That's where some of our endowments as a church are held by Mid-Atlantic. It was a workshop, an academy that we've begun that will run over the next couple of years where we'll go for various segments and where it will teach us about how do we give back, how we financially honor God in our giving, how we recognize and look at what God has given us and how we can use these gifts to bless others. When Bob encouraged me to attend, he had signed up for it. I thought, well, yes, where we're at as a church financially and running a deficit budget, why, I get that this would be important to be serious about how we honor God with our financial gifts as well. And so going to this academy, I'm taking in much already. But what I didn't anticipate was that this first segment would spend quite a bit of time on clergy finances. 
You see, we are strange animals when it comes to finances. We may be labeled strange animals anyhow, but clergy are strange animals when it comes to finances. You see, according to Social Security, we're self-employed, but according to the IRS, why we are, are employees. And so that's uh, very tricky to figure out your taxes each year. But what this academy has invited me to do is to look at my own finances. How am I glorifying God? How am I taking serious what God has blessed me with? How might I be a blessing to others? How might what I have received make a difference in this world? That's a whole different attitude. I mean, it wasn't to say, how can I get more for me? But how might I put to work the blessings that God has bestowed upon me? When you come at, with that attitude, how can I honor God? How can I give back to God? How can I be part of God's work in my life? Then these verses take on a, a different meaning. I mean, if you were to take these verses out of context and read, uh, ask God for whatever you wish and it will be given to you. Oh, what I might want for self. But if I am seeking to honor Christ... In all that I do, with all that I have, these verses take on new meaning. They capture new life that is offered to us in Christ. How do we, in our faithful giving of our finances, honor God? How can we, in our daily practices, be making a difference? That seminar invited me not only to look at that holistically as the church, but what am I doing? How am I being a good steward? Recently, I came across this quote from Elie Wiesel, who wrote the brilliant autobiography novel, Night. Survived a concentration camp. My son, Zachary, is a history major, and so I asked him, Zach, have you heard of Elie Wiesel? I said, yeah, of course, Dad. And a couple minutes later, he came into my office holding the very book that I'm quoting here, saying, here, you need to read this. You need to go deeper. That's the invitation that Christ is offering us. And in this book, Elie Wiesel shares the following. He tells of how a rabbi taught him how to pray. The rabbi explained to him that in every question, there's a power beyond the obvious answer. Man raises himself toward God, he says, by the questions he asks him. Man questions and God answers, but we do not understand those answers. I pray to the God within me, says the rabbi, that he will give me the strength to ask him the right questions. May God give each of us the strength to ask God the right questions in our faith journey. Jesus was instructing his followers then, after he is risen, soon to depart, what it will mean to be a follower of his. What does it mean to you to be a follower of Jesus Christ? When you hear his words saying, I am the vine and you are the branches, through me you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Well, our lives are busy. Our schedules are full. I get that. But we can only live out, truly live out God's will if our hearts are open. And yes, if we're willing to ask the right questions. Lord, what would you have me do with the blessings that you have given me? Lord, what would you have us do as a congregation right here in Gaithersburg, Maryland? Lord, what would you have me do? These are some of the questions we ask in the situation you know I'm in right now, Lord. What does it look like for me to be a faithful follower of yours? The following quote shared by Bruce Ebbing speaks to this, Eberlin. 
He shares, pruning enhances the growth of a tree, not only by eliminating extraneous branches, but also by enabling light to shine on those that remain. In this I am passage, Jesus proclaims that I am the vine and you are the branches, those branches that abide in Christ and that remain connected to the vine will flourish and bear much fruit. While those that are disconnected from the vine will wither and die. Flourishing and withering are not a matter of rewards and punishments, but the result of our commitment to nurture our own spiritual lives and the spiritual lives of others. Our commitment to the spiritual formation may lead to political action, since the spirit may wither and die as a result of the impact of poverty, substandard education, dysfunctional family life, and social injustice. To nurture our faith and the faith of others. The folks are struggling, as we heard with the brown bag ministry, to have food to eat, a place to live, Health needs, but no health care. That's why the neighbor-to-neighbor conversations that Deacon Helen is inviting us to be part of that's meeting right after service today, where we'll discuss how are we in the community, how can these needs be met, that each of us can be more available unto God, each of us can live out God's plan when our basic needs are cared for. Jesus gives us a lot of I am statements in the Gospel of John. And this one is unique because of the end. I am the vine. And you, you are the branches. Christ is seeking to work through your life and mine and our life together. But so often we think, what difference would my life? We read this scripture and we hear it speaking to those who are more seasoned in the faith. Those whose lives are more settled. Those who are not facing challenges. But Jesus doesn't say, I'm the vine and you one day will be a branch. Or or you used to be. You are. God is seeking to witness God's love through you. John Moore talks about this. We go back to the 18th century. He was a shoemaker. He was determined he was going to be a branch. He was going to be a faithful witness for Christ. Well, there was another apprentice by the name of William who was hired. And John repeatedly talked to him about spiritual things. But the new worker didn't want to be bothered. (laughs) Then one day he was caught exchanging a counterfeit shilling for a good one. In his guilt and humiliation, he asked John for help and prayer. Through the faithful witness of John Moore, that man put his faith in Christ and developed into a committed disciple. The young apprentice was William Carey, who later became a remarkably fruitful missionary to India. Carey's life and ministry had a tremendous influence on the cause of worldwide gospel outreach in modern times. Jesus said in John 8, By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. This could be discouraging to Christians who can't preach, sing, teach, or go to the mission field. They might see themselves as stuck in a situation that makes fruitful service impossible. If that's how you feel, then take courage from the example of John War. His impact on a co-worker brought glory to God and untold blessing to multitudes of people around the world. Never underestimate how God can use your witness, your bearing fruit, your speaking a word or simply being a presence, coming to a conversation about how we can be a neighbor in our community. I promise you, God will use you. For I am the vine, Jesus says, and you, you are the branches. 
I give you these challenges as we conclude this time of reflection. Is new growth emerging in your relationship with Christ? What pruning needs to take place so new life will emerge? Secondly, how are you nurturing your spiritual life and the life of others? Strive to not undervalue the difference your witness can make. How might you point another to Christ in your daily living? Through Christ, our lives will make a difference. Through our connection to Christ and with one another, we will have an impact for Christ in this community and through our connection throughout the world. Thanks be to God for this opportunity to be part of his ministry. Amen. And so with thanksgiving for the opportunity to participate in God's work where we can nurture the spiritual lives of others through what we're doing, offering worship, offering Sunday school, offering a youth group, offering ministries in our community, your morning offering, your giving helps this become possible. So with joy, we present our offering to God as our praise band brings us a special music.
Let us pray. Gracious God, as we offer our gifts today, we reflect on the wisdom in the words from John's Gospel. In this imagery, we recognize our role as branches connected to you, the source of our strength and vitality. Help us stay rooted in your love, producing fruit that brings glory to your name. May these gifts signify our commitment to abide in your teachings and work joyfully in response to your love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Friends in Christ, as we enter into this time of prayer, I invite you to keep the General Conference of the United Methodist Church in your prayers, as well as all of the leaders, people, congregations, and the communities that we serve with across the Methodist connection. May we abide together in Christ, and may the fruit of God's grace grow within us and through us as the church in the world. This morning, I will lead us in prayer using the litany for the church and for the world from our United Methodist Book of Worship. And I will pause for your silent prayers after each petition. Let us now pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to stand and sing, O Blessed Spring. Please be seated. As we prepare to go forth to bear fruit, I invite you to reflect upon these challenges throughout the week. I ask you, is new growth emerging in your relationship with Christ? What pruning needs to take place, a new life will emerge. How are you nurturing your spiritual life and the life of others? Strive to not undervalue the difference your witness can make. How might you point another to Christ in your daily living? Now as we go forth, branches of the vine, go from this place blessed by love to work in love with your family, your friends, your neighbors, and strangers who will become friends, bearing the fruit of the life-giving vine as you cultivate abundant life wherever you go. Amen.